Sunday school hour this morning, Lord, and the lesson, Lord, that we learned about your baptism, Lord. Mm -hmm. Father, we just thank you for this church. And yeah. Father, we thank you for our pastor. Father, we thank you for all the members here this mm -hmm. morning, Lord, yeah. and the prayers that went up this week, Lord, if I had knee surgery, Lord, we just thank yeah. you for them all, Lord. And Father, now bless us all for the Lord and bless the ones who don't have to give. Lord, for you, Jesus, sweet, precious man, we pray.
like to welcome everyone this morning. Uh, we'll go ahead and do our birthdays and uh, anniversaries. Is anyone having a birthday this week? A birthday. What about an anniversary? Uh, anniversary. No. There's red books in front of you. Give one and sing along with us. Hold up, page two eighty one.
Paulo Estela, então, já pode ter um
He's alive, he's alive. 
Sunday school, you don't study a yeah. double blessing. Today. That's right. One of the points was good, and it always is. Yeah, yeah. I just enjoyed it this morning. If you weren't here at Sunday school, well, shame on you three times. <laughs> Amen. There you go, Bruce. You made it, brother. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce said, you don't never say that when I make it to Sunday school. I just want to know. Amen. Amen. Uh, you'll find Psalms 119. Psalms chapter 119. Why you're finding it? It's all right. I'm going to send it to the song. I'm going to do this for Brother David today. Bless me. Bless him, Lord. Oh, God. Glory. 
Touch you his high holy name. Yeah. I love it. Yes. This yes. way, yes. I've yes. discovered the treasure of his word. Yes. Amen. The wonderful, glorious, precious treasure of the Word of God. And you know what that is. You learned it as a child. We talked about it last week. Yeah. Oh. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible Amen. tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak. But he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves Amen. me. Yes, Jesus Amen. loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen. 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 That's Amen. the treasure the of his Word. And the truth of his Word is Jesus Amen. We learned that last week. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. The Bible is truth. Yes, yes. Amen. Now, you say, well, I don't believe uh, this in the Bible. And I don't believe that in the Bible. It doesn't have any difference. That doesn't make any difference uh, to the truth of the Bible. Amen. Amen. What you or I believe has absolutely no bearing on Amen. the truth of God. Fire burns whether you believe it or not. Right. Amen. Amen. Hell's real whether you believe it or not. Right. Poison kills whether you believe it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The truth is the truth. Yeah. And it'll stand when the world's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 The truth. And I love the timelessness yeah. of the word of God. Oh my. It's from eternity yeah. to eternity. Right. Yes. Amen. Right. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. The Word, yeah. the Word, Amen. the Word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's Jesus. Amen. He is the Word. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory to His holy name. And we talked last week about learning to appreciate the virtues of the Word of God and those wonderful virtues timeless mm -hmm. truth that is to be treasured. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Today, I want to share with you from this beautiful psalm, uh, the longest chapter in the Bible, the longest psalm by far in the Bible, but I want to share with you uh, on learning how to incorporate, incorporate the vitality of the Word of God. Amen. That word vitality uh, is something else. It means life. Mm -hmm. It means energy. Yeah. Literally, energetic life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's what the Bible will give you. That's what the Bible uh, uh, will bring uh, into your soul, into your spirit, into your very being. It will bring life giving energy yes, for you to walk through this world all the way to eternity yeah, in heaven with Christ. Now, isn't that something? Amen. Amen. This one book yeah. Amen. of books yes. is life. Jesus said in John chapter 6 and verse 63, he said, the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Life. Mm -hmm. That word urbis, where we get the word energy from. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Uh, these words are life giving, they are uh, power giving, full of power. Mm -hmm. Amen. Wow. And we need to learn how to incorporate these words into our life so that we can put them into practice. Yeah. Yes, amen. You see, um, it's very important to know the Bible. Yes. It's much more vital to do the Bible. Yes. Yeah. Now, you can read a cookbook from cover to cover yeah. 50 times. <laughs> but if you don't ever cook the food and eat the meal, what good has it done? Amen. 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 If you can read this book cover to cover uh, every year, yeah. amen. I read the Bible through every year. Well, amen. That's wonderful. Amen. What have you done with what you learned? Amen. Yes. Come on. amen. 
Yeah. I know people who can quote scripture but never do scripture. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Unfortunately, I know a lot of pastors like that. A lot of preachers <laughs> like that, dear brother. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, heading up powerless yeah. churches. We need to incorporate the vitality of the word of God. Well, how do we do that, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked <laughs> this morning. Uh, I'm going to give you a few things that'll help you. I want you to get out your pencil yeah. and your pen and write these things down because I promise you, I promise you, if you'll do these things as you read and study the Word of God, it will absolutely transform your life. Yeah. It, will, it will absolutely change you to the very core of your being. Mm -hmm. Number one, Pray over it. Yes, amen. That's right. Pray over it. Mm -hmm. When you open the Bible and you begin to read, pray yes. about what you're reading. Look in verse number 12 of Psalm 119. Amen. Let me get over there my own self. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Amen. It says, Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me. Thy statutes. Have you ever prayed that? Yes. Right. Have you ever opened the Bible, mm -hmm. been reading and studying, and cried out to God from your heart, uh, from your very soul, Oh God, teach me your truths, mm -hmm. your statutes, your word, Oh God, teach me. Mm -hmm. Because if we'll do that, if we will do that, look what happens in verse number 18. He says, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Yeah. If we will cry out to God and ask him to teach us, our eyes will be opened yeah. to the beauty Amen. and the wonder of the word of God. Yeah. Amen. It always blows my mind, Brother David. Uh, when people come to me and tell me, I, I just, I don't really, I just, it's just boring to me. <laughs> it just I just don't get it, and it gets boring, and it gets monotonous, and I just don't have time. I'd rather look at days of my lives. <laughs> <laughs> or saying do the hourglass or whatever. Oh, that is days of my lives. <laughs> <laughs> Tennessee lose again. <laughs> we can't miss that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> or watch 48 grown men in hopped up automobiles <laughs> drive in a circle <laughs> for four hours. <laughs> sense to me. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> yeah, they've got the car going to turn one way. <laughs> Teach me, oh God, that my eyes will be opened and I can behold the beauty and the wonder of thy word. Remember in Luke uh, chapter 24, uh, Jesus walking with those disciples on the road to Emmaus, and he, and he opened the scriptures, the Bible says, and began to teach them and to explain them. And he said they opened their understanding. Yes. Amen. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Have you ever asked Jesus <coughs> to open your understanding right. to his word? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God in their heart. Our eyes were open. Look what happens in verse 36. Once uh, uh, you begin to pray and ask God to teach you, and he, he has opened your eyes, he says, Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not 
to covetousness. Incline my heart. Not only will he open your eyes, he will open your heart. He will incline your heart to the things of God, to the yes. word of God. You know what that simply means? He will place in you the desires of your heart. Yes. Amen. And the thing that your heart will desire more than any other is the word of God. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. You'll learn to feast on it. Mm -hmm. It will fill you to overflowing. The word of God, your heart will long for it. It will desire it more than bread when you're hungry. Yes, amen. Amen. I, 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 Praise the Lord. I'd rather read it as to eat when I'm hungry. And I love to eat. <laughs> Especially when I'm hungry. But that is not one of the main criteria <coughs> for me eating. <laughs> if I'm not hungry and somebody puts some chicken and dumplings in front of me, you know what I'm going to do? Eat. Yeah. Or one of those good uh, pies that shows up every now and then. Those are yeah, if I'm hungry or not, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get on some pie. <laughs> <laughs> or when Red Lobster has that all-you-can-eat scrimps over there. <laughs> I told him that last night. <laughs> I sure wasn't hungry on about that 70 or 80th shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> but I My heart will be stirred to the gospel. Man, and look in verse number 73. Look what happens in this order of things that will happen when we ask God to teach us. He said, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Amen. Oh, our mind will be enlightened to the things of God. Right. We'll not only know what they are, we'll understand why yes, they amen. are. <coughs> you see, isn't that something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sunday school this morning was wonderful. I enjoyed it. I had a good time. Uh, but I, I want to know why. I don't just want to know that, yes, we do this baptism because uh, Jesus did it, because he commanded it. Why did he command it? Why did he do it? Yeah, amen. amen. And see, when we dig down into the soil of God's word and when we, when we really begin to ask those questions, amen, that's when God begins to enlighten us. He begins to open our understanding, you see. And we can then begin to fit things together. <coughs> and it sinks into our soul. Amen. So we must pray over it. Not only should we pray over it. Here's the second thing. You ready? Ponder it. Think about it. Meditate yeah. on it. This is not a novel. No. It's a book of instruction. Yes. It's a book of comfort. Yeah. Um, it's a book of love. It's a love letter yeah. is what it is. And in this letter of love that God our Father has given to each one of his children, he, 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 he gives all of these benefits through it. It comforts us. It instructs us. It, it corrects us. It, it, it teaches us. And but we must think about it, ponder it, meditate on the things of the word of God. Look in verse number 15. He said, the voice of no wrong one. Amen. There we go. I will meditate in thy precepts mm -hmm. and have respect unto thy ways. I will meditate unto thy yeah. precepts. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to ponder it. I'm going to uh, uh, begin to study and understand uh, what it is God is speaking into my spirit. But how do you do that? How do we really do that? Life is busy. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to, to make the time. Tough. 
I just don't have time. I just don't. For studying the Word of God. I'm going to qualify it because here's what I promise you. You have time to do anything you really want to do. That's true. That's right. Anything you really want. Listen. I'm a full grown man. 55, almost 56 years old. I do pretty much as I please. <laughs> and so do you. Now, if you're being God of us, yeah. amen. <laughs> if I want Brother David to go fishing, I don't care how backed up the work is. If I really want to go fishing, you know what I'm going to do? If I if I really want to see my grandson, I don't care what he's doing in school. I go get him. Come on, bro. My granddad come get me out of school. Don't tell your mama, man. <laughs> Let me out of being in the street so it looked like I walked home. <laughs> I want to say that we have time to do whatever yes, we do. want to do, whatever we really want to do. We're talking about pondering on the word of God. Amen. Look in verse number 147. God helps us, see? He knows we were going to ask that question. I don't have time. Life is busy. I don't have time. Here's what he says. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried. I hoped in thy word. There you go. Okay. You know what that's saying? Get up an hour earlier. Get up 45 minutes earlier to get along with God. Word. Oh, you don't understand what they, I just can't get up. Not a problem. God has made accommodation. Amen. Look at verse 148. My eyes prevent the night watches <laughs> that I might meditate in thy word. <laughs> Stay up an hour later. God, see what God does with it. He loves you. Uh, Okay, you're not a morning person? Take care of it in the evening. Time. Yes, amen. Not a night person? Take care of it in the morning. Amen. But ponder, the word, meditate on the word of God. Yeah. And when you read, listen, when you read God's word, when you're studying God's word, when you're meditating on God's word, do it with a pen in your hand and some paper in front of you. Because when you do that, what you're saying is, Father, I'm ready to receive. I'm expecting to receive here, Father. And so when you speak to my heart, I'm going to write the principles down. I want to write the precepts down that you've given me. I want to write the encouragement down, the hope down, the promise down that you're uh, revealing to me today. Yes, Lord. Yes, you say, well, I remember. Here's what Adrian Rogers used to say. The weakest ink is better than the sharpest knife. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 Write it down. <clears throat> Write it down. Study the word of God. And the other thing was when you write it, have you ever noticed when you write something down, you remember it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. If you'll take the time to write it down, watch yourself write it down, it sticks. Amen. 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 It goes into the computer. Mm -hmm. Expect to receive the gift of God. Use common sense mm -hmm. when reading the Word of God. Amen. Use your sanctified, if I can say it that way, common sense. Mm -hmm. See poetry as poetry. See prophecy as prophecy. Prophecy and promises, promise. See, Proverbs 
as proverb. Mm -hmm. Now, if you try, if you try to make pro promise out of proverb, you lose your religion. Right. <laughs> it's going to cause you all kind of spiritual problems. Yes, amen. Because a proverb is not a promise; it's a proverb. Yes. Indeed. So, what's a proverb? A proverb is a general principle. Amen. Generally applied that brings general results. Yeah. Amen. Promise is a specific promise. Yeah. Amen. A general principle that generally applied that brings a general result. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, the, the Bible is written so beautifully yeah. in so many different uh, types of writing style. We talked about that a little bit in, in uh, Sunday school. It has poetry. It has drama. It has suspense. It, 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 it's just, it has, in, it's an instructional book. It's, uh, it, it, it's, it's an, a book of uh, self-help, not, not self-help, God's help, but it's a book of help. You see, it, it, it's wonderful the way that it is written. Here, here's what you need to do. Now write these things down. I'm going to give you six questions. I've given you these before, <coughs> but I'm going to give them to you again. Six questions you should always ask when reading the Word of God. When you're reading a scripture or a passage, and this will help you in understanding and ferreting out the truths and the precepts and the principles that are in that passage of scripture that you're studying. Are you ready? Say amen. amen. Number one, is there a promise to claim? I'm reading this scripture. I'm reading this passage. Is there a promise to claim? Number two, is there a lesson to learn? In what I'm studying, in what I'm reading, is there a lesson to learn? Oh. Number three, is there a blessing to enjoy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there a blessing to enjoy? Number four, is there a command to obey? Yeah. Is there a command to obey? Number five, is there a sin to avoid? All right. Amen. Is there a sin to avoid? Yeah. And then lastly, number six, is there a new thought or truth to carry with me? Mm -hmm. Is there a new thought or new truth, something I've never seen before, to carry with me today? Because when God gives you something, it's for a purpose. You may not be able to see the purpose, but it's there. Amen. And is it new? Is it something that God has seen that's coming my way down the road and I need to have this in my pocket yeah. to combat that which is coming? Bless you. Let me see. Is there a new thought or new truth to carry with me? Amen. If you'll if you'll ask those questions, whatever scripture you're, you're reading, whatever you're studying, if you'll ask those Sunday school teachers, ready? Any script, any passage of scripture, doesn't matter. Open your Bible, ask those six questions, you've got your lesson. Ask and answer those six questions, you've got your Sunday school lesson. Any passage of scripture. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? <coughs> well, I'm excited about it. Anyway. <laughs> so number two, we must ponder, we must meditate on, we need to preserve it. Yeah. Preserve the word of God. How do you do that? Well, he tells us right here in verse number 11. Look right here, he said, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. I'm hiding the word of God in my heart. Hide it in our heart. Look in verse number 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Yeah. We must preserve it. Memorize the scripture. Your mind is a marvel. The greatest computer ever built. We carry around in our head. Yeah. It can compute, calculate, read, it can do all these things at the same time and, and do them at lightning speed. Mm -hmm. 
But here's the problem. Garbage in, garbage out. Amen. A computer can only do what somebody has told it to do, right? Mm -hmm. It only can operate with the data that has been fed into it. That's right. That's right. That's it. And so if we say, I can't remember God's word, maybe we got too much data. That's right. Here's what happened to the human computer when at the in the fall in the garden. When Adam fell, his garden quit growing flowers and vegetables and started growing weeds. Yeah. The garden of his brain, you see, his intellect, began to be filled with all kinds of other garbage yes. than the things of God. And that's why we can't quit. And that's why, have you ever noticed how much easier it is to grow weeds than flowers? <laughs> yeah, man. Or vegetables? And that's why you got to get out there with that hole and you got to work. Amen. Yeah. You got to go to work and cultivate that right. Weed that God cut those things out so that it won't choke off the good stuff. That's right. Amen. You see? And that's the problem. Most of us have a mind full of weeds. Mm -hmm. We need to do some weeding. We fill it with everything except the main thing. That's right. Amen. We right. settle for good things instead of the best things. Yeah. You see? We need to preserve. We need to practice it. Number four, practice it. Look in verses one through five. Blessed are the undefiled in thy way who walk in the law of, thy, of the Lord. <laughs> Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the, their whole heart. They also do not do, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Do the word. You want to learn more of the word of God? Do the word of God that you know. Do the word of God. Luke 18, 18 says, To him that hath shall be given. Yeah. Amen. You know what that means? The rich get richer. And if you're rich in his word, yeah. he will continue to heap it on you. Yeah. Amen. He will Amen. continue to give it and give it and give it more and more. Learn more of the word of God. Obey the part, you know. Um, uh, oh, it is it. Mark Twain is said to have written that it's not the part of the Bible I don't understand that gives me problems. <laughs> it's the part I do understand that causes me so much trouble. <laughs> you see, amen. If we'll do what we know to do, he will open the rest. And did you know that blessing from God always is preceded by obedience to God? Amen. Have I ever shared that with you before? No. Amen. It's the truth. Practice it. And then finally, number five, proclaim it. Yes. Amen. Say it. Talk it. Give it. Yeah. Share it. Amen. Give it away. Verse number 13. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. Verse 27. Make me to understand the way of thy precept, so shall I talk of thy wondrous works. Amen. Verse number 46, I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings and will not be ashamed. Amen. I will speak of thy testimonies before kings and shall not be ashamed. Verse number 172, my tongue shall speak of thy word for all thy commandments are righteousness. 
Proclaim it. Proclaim it. Give it away. Stow it in your heart. Show it in your life. Sow it in your word. The more of the word of God that we give away, the more that sticks to us. Amen. You see, the more we share, the more we grow. It's so beautiful. Now we need to appreciate the virtues of the word of God. We need to incorporate the vitality of the word of God. <coughs> I promise you, if you'll do these things, mm -hmm. the Bible will become so real yeah. and vivid and alive <coughs> in your life, it will energize you. And are you feeling better? Are you feeling more restless? Are you feeling like you've just been beat to death and just tired? And, and over it, get in the Word of God. Yeah. It's the greatest energy boost to ever known to mankind. Yeah. But we generally, when we get that way, we want to start grabbing on for every other thing we can find. Anything we can find that we think will give us peace, energy, hope, uh, uh, solace, whatever. And we go everywhere except to the very place we ought to go, yeah. to the Word of God that will absolutely transform our life and will absolutely energize us yeah. in a way that we've never known before. Amen. Amen. We need to incorporate the vitality of the Word of God. And the only way to do that is to get in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. 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 To get in. Don't take my word for it. Right. I challenge you to challenge me. Yes, amen. Do this. Do these five things. Pray over it. Yeah. Ponder it. Preserve it. Practice it. Do all of those things. But listen. One month. Give me one month. Do it. Every day for one month. And see what I've told you today. Amen. Amen. It's not the truth. Now, if we want to require a little bit of sacrifice, yeah. we might have to give up a little time. That's the only thing it'll cost you. All the rest of it's free. But it, it'll cost you a little bit of time, which, by the way, is the most valuable thing you have. Amen. Amen. Do it. I promise you. I promise you. Yeah. God will open your eyes, your heart, your understanding, and all oh of my the glorious things you'll begin to see yeah. in the wonders of His Word. That's why I love it so. Let's pray. Hey. Father God, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness, your grace. We thank you for your Word. Help us, Father. To have a hunger for it. Help us, Father, to, 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 to long for it, Lord. Yes. Teach us thy ways, Father, yes. in your word. Open our understanding. Open our hearts to receive its truth, its precepts, its benefits, its glory, Father. And we'll give you the honor and the yes. glory for it. Amen. But now, Lord, we understand. We understand today that we can read it from now till Jesus comes. But apart from God the Holy Spirit living within us, we'll never <coughs> grasp it. It'll never transform us. It will never, uh, we'll never know the benefits of it. And we know that the only way that we can have the Spirit of God yeah. is to have the Son of God. Yeah. And there are those here that have never trusted Jesus, never surrendered to his Lordship, never received the gift of the Holy Spirit of God. And so, Father, we pray that you would work in those hearts this morning, that you would open their understanding to the gospel, that Jesus loves them so much that he went to the cross and died to pay for their sins. And not only did he go to the cross and pay for your sin, but he was buried yeah. in a tomb. And, and, and for three days, he lied dead in that grave 
and, and separated your sin and my sin as far as the east is from the west from Almighty God the Father. And then on the third day, God raised him from the dead, victorious over death, hell, and the grave. Now he lives at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you. He is whispering in the ear of God for you and for me. Isn't that wonderful? Why don't you just trust him today? Why don't you just come to him today? He says, I love you. Come as you are. And I'll in no wise cast you out. But he says, I love you so much, I won't leave you that way. Oh, I'll clean you up. I'll help you to straighten up. And I'll help you to go up into heaven yeah. on that day. Amen. In Jesus' name, I ask you to pray all these things. Amen. They're going to come. We're going to sing a verse of an invitation song. And as we sing, I want you to come. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you've never surrendered to his Lordship. This is your day. Yeah. You come. And he will open his word to the wondrous glory that is inside. Won't you come this morning? As we say, what are we going to say? One seventy-seven. And number one seventy-seven. As we say, we come. Maybe you're here today and you just need to come and pray. Maybe you just need to come and ask God to give you that desire for his word and the things of his word. Won't you come? Whatever the need as the Holy Spirit leads you, you come. Have you been to Jesus the man
and once in a while we'll check the back and forth a little bit. And he'll let me know he's praying for me, and I'll let him know I'm praying for him. That's right. Uh, you know what? Pastors need a little encouragement now and then too. Yeah, amen. Amen. Preachers, we do, don't we? Right. Amen. And I'm glad I've got a church family that, that gives me encouragement. Amen. I appreciate it. I sure do. All right. Don't forget tonight, we've got Brother Mike Backer coming to preach for us. Dear, dear little friend of mine. Um, he, uh, I was privileged to lead him to the Lord years ago. And, and now he's standing for the Lord. Man. Preaching his words. So you come support him. I know he'll appreciate it. And I Amen. And so don't forget about your little boxes, the Christmas boxes. If you took a box, please bring them either back tonight or at least by Wednesday night. Really like to have them in here so we can get them seen. Amen. Man. All right. All hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you all the days of your life. May you know the joy of his salvation, the peace in his resurrection, and the hope of his soon coming. And may you long for his word every day. In Jesus' name and for his sake, I ask and pray these things in all God's people's sake. Amen. 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 You're free to go. <laughs>